Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. In this video, I want to talk about the arguments that are made in the Quran. Now, from an Islamic paradigm, the Quran is revealed from Allah, from God. So, therefore, we can say certain things for definite. Since this is a divine book of divine origin that does not contain the words of a man, but rather exclusively the words of God as revealed to Muhammad through Jibreel, there should be no situations in which we can find clear evidence of human origin. Easy. Contrast this with the Christian perspective, where we think that our scripture has been revealed through the Holy Spirit and inspiring man to write down what the Spirit is directing him to write down. The Quran has a much more strict approach with exactly what can be in their book and what can't. In this case, has to be divine, has to be from God, cannot have any human origin. That leads us to today's topic, the different arguments in the Quran. Now, the Quran makes arguments in favor of itself. In fact, the Quran as a whole, as scholars like Dr. Gabriel Reynolds have pointed out, as well as others, contains a lot of polemical statements. The Quran tries to use accounts of prior prophets, as well as some of its own arguments that it's conjured, to put forward the case that this is definitely from God. It cannot be from human. We're going to go through these arguments and we're going to evaluate them and see if they are good arguments. I mean, after all, if they came from God, they should be some of the best arguments that humanity has probably ever heard. They shouldn't be average arguments, and worse yet, they shouldn't be poor arguments or fallacious arguments, because that would mean that either God is fallacious, either God is uh, not very clued upon philosophy and logic, but rather isn't so, isn't so good in that area, or this is just evidence that this has a clear human origin. These are the arguments we're going to cover today. First argument. If the Quran was not from God, you should be able to produce a surah, a chapter, like it. This isn't possible because the Quran is of divine origin. Second argument, if the Quran was not from God, it would have many contradictions in it. Third argument, you should believe in Muhammad because the revelation, the Quran, confirms that which you have with you. Fourth argument, Muhammad is found in the prior scriptures, so you should believe in him as a prophet. Now, in this video, I'm going to be covering just one argument, and then in future videos, I'll go into the others and talk about those. This video is going to start off with the first argument. If the Quran was not from God, you should be able to produce a surah or a chapter like it. So how does this break down? So there are different verses in the Quran that talk about how the Quran is something so unique and has properties in it in some sense that it is clearly not of human origin because it is impossible to replicate it. It is inimitable. Inimitable meaning that you can't produce anything like it. It's just so unique that you can't possibly make something that you could convincingly pass off as the Quran. It just wouldn't be possible. So here's the first problem I have with this. Is inimitability divine? It seems as if the answer is probably not. For example, if I wanted to, I could write something in my own language, in my own style, that arguably someone could never truly replicate. Now, they may get close to it, but there's always an argument that I can say, no, this stands alone, this, this is in a category of its own. I could even mishmash different genres so that it doesn't even match an existing genre that we know today, and hence I could say that makes it unique and inimitable. It seemed as if it would be quite reasonable to say that actually you can produce things that just aren't completely replicable. I mean, has anyone produced something like, say, J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter? Has someone produced something that is truly like that? Well, it depends what you mean by like. What does it mean to make something like this? Sure, there are different works that seem like it, but is it just like it? Which is what the Quran seems to be getting at. It seems to me it's quite clear that there are many authors that have produced works that are like Harry Potter in some sense, but not exactly like it. And if that's the case, well, then inimitability applies to human works as well as divine works. And if that's the case, then this is a terrible argument because it can be used to demonstrate that authors like J.K. Rowling, J.R. Tolkien, C.S. Lewis, and others are somehow of divine origin. <laughs> and that would be nonsense. So that's the first problem I think I have with it. It would be up to the Muslim to demonstrate that inimitability is a divine property that doesn't apply to other works. And that, of course, goes very low, very low down into what do you mean produce something like it. They would have to demonstrate you can produce things that are like something, but are also not that something. The next point I want to raise up, and this is something I think is really just a, a killing blow to this argument. If you weren't convinced by the first point, this, this is it really. How do you define... So within the argument is the understanding that the Quran is somehow heads and tails above other pieces of work, precisely because it is of divine origin and is from Allah. The issue, of course, is how do you define what makes it that quality, because evidently the Qur'an is something that is a recitation, it's heard, it's understood, which means it must have 
created properties, and those created properties are in creation and are in many different works. So exactly what aspects of those qualities make it better than those other works. So to break that down, when they say you can't produce a surah like any in the Quran, what specific aspects of that surah, or that ayah, that verse, that chapter, whatever it might be, that make it stand out above other works, that make it better than other works in some sense, in such a way that it cannot be imitated by humans because things of human origin simply cannot match that caliber of, of work. That Quran is, is a a revelation that is so above anything humans can produce, you simply cannot imitate it. Well, the answer they will have is, we don't know. It, it has characteristics that we can't define. Now, they tend to obfuscate this, um, especially if you talk to Dai'is, different Dawah guys, they'll say, well, first of all, it has to be in Arabic. And it's like, okay, well, I'm not sure why, because Allah's speech is also in not Arabic, because he revealed the Injil and the Torah, which weren't in Arabic. So Allah's speech is not just solely Arabic. <laughs> So it seems as if that criteria is question begging to begin with. But okay, let's say, yeah, it has to be in Arabic. Cool. So it has to be in Arabic. What else is there as part of a requirement to produce something like it? And this is where it gets weird because there's no agreed upon answer to this question. For example, there are verses in the Quran that have rhythm. They rhyme. And it's quite nice. You're reading through it in Arabic. You can see, ah, this rhymes with this. Okay, that's nice. So is rhyming a standard? But you see, that's problematic because there's other verses of the Quran that don't rhyme. So is it better to rhyme? Or better not to rhyme? Well, Muslims can't answer that. Because if they pick either one, they're condemning other, other parts of the Quran. <laughs> they either do or do not rhyme. Okay, so we don't know about rhyming. But what about actual style of writing? So if I were to say, the Quran is better than other works because it's verbose. It's lengthy. Is that a characteristic of what it means to be inimitable? Is that what it means to be totally above other human works? That it can't be uh, mimicked? It can't be replicated? Well, again... There seems to be no reason why that's the case. And worse yet, there are verses in the Quran that are also very brief. So it can't be how verbose the text is or the recitation is. It can't be how brief the recitation is, because again, the Quran has both of those. It can't be how well it rhymes or doesn't rhyme. What about tense? Is it better to be past tense, future tense, present tense? Again, the Quran shifts in between these. So it can't be any of those. Is it best to... What about perspective? Is it better to write from first-person perspective, third-person perspective, second-person perspective? Well, again, the Quran has all of these. <laughs> so, and likewise, so does tons of human works that have all these things so far. So it can't be any of these. None of these criteria allow us to understand what the challenge is and to actually try and make that challenge. Okay, well, maybe, maybe it's something more sort of abstract. Maybe it's like how well the Quran influences people. The Quran is a credibly influential book that has influenced millions, if not billions of people across the world. Maybe that's a criteria that cannot be imitated. But the problem with that is that's already been done because there's an even more influential book called the Bible. So the Bible already meets that standard. And the Bible has the letters of Paul in it, ladies and gentlemen. So a Muslim, I don't think, could even say it's its influence that defines the fact that it's inimitable. Is it better to have a recitation that is said quickly or said shortly? No idea, because the Quran has traditions of both in different parts and different surahs. What about length of chapters? Is it better to have lengthier chapters or shorter chapters? Same like with verse, lengthier verses or shorter verses. Again, the Quran has all of these. What about genre? Is certain genres better than other genres? Is biographical accounts better than non-biographical accounts? Is poetry better than apocryphal writings? Is apocryphal writings better than proverbs? Is proverbs better than historical accounts? Are historical accounts better than polemical writings? Of course, the Quran covers a large, broad amount of these because scholars agree that the Quran doesn't seem to have a clear genre. And again, that can't be what makes it special because I can write something that clearly doesn't fit into any known genre. What about purity of language? Maybe it's the fact that the Quran is in a pure language that makes it special and inimitable? Well, no, because first of all, that's not true. The Quran is not just in Arabic, it's in many languages. Uh, you should see the video I did with Saint Murad. He actually goes through this uh, in our live stream together. And even if that were the case, well, I can write a book that's just in English. Or I could write a book in French or German. And as long as it doesn't have any other words from any of the languages in it, then it's a pure book. But obviously that doesn't mean it's from God. What about the emotional tone of the recitation? Is it better to have a recitation, a text that is very aggressive, very assertive, confrontational? Or is it better to be meek and mild? Is it better to be compassionate? Is it better to be thoughtful and sympathetic and empathetic? Or is it better to be bashful and rash? I mean, of course, the Quran also encompasses elements of all these things. So picking one seems arbitrary. 
and to say that one is greater than the other condemns other aspects of the Qur'an. There is no consistent, unique element of the Qur'an that is not present in other works of creation. Maybe we just have to go full circle and say, maybe it's just the fact that the Qur'an came from God. That's what makes it inimitable. That is it. Okay, but there are other religious texts that you believe came from God, and that does include the Injil and the Torah, and the Zabur, and other potential things. So it actually does look like the Qur'an is replicable because there is no objective standard that someone can commit to. Now, to be fair, I do think that there is objectivity and beauty. I think the issue with them is that they cannot understand, they cannot give criteria that cannot be met. So they just have to back out. And the more you push them on this, the more you push Da'is to give an explanation as to what it is about the Qur'an that makes it unique, the more you realize there is nothing that makes it unique. There is no unique property or attribute that makes the Qur'an unique from any other work in creation. It, when you push for answers, like give me technicalities, what is it about the Qur'an that makes it inimitable? They can't tell you because the answer is, well, nothing. Here's a challenge to Muslims. Any Muslims watching, or if, if you want to present this challenge to Muslims, simply say, you say the Qur'an is inimitable because the Qur'an makes a challenge where you cannot produce a surah or surahs like it. What is the criteria to meet that? objectively, and then start going through a list of different types of writing, different types of recitation, and they'll just flop because they have no idea. <laughs> the third point, which is something that pretty much comes to everyone's mind, um, other than Muslims who wholeheartedly believe this, who haven't stepped back and thought about it a bit more objectively, is the fact that there have been many cases throughout history where Arab-speaking Muslims have thought that there was something that was Quran that wasn't Quran. Now that to me seems like you can imitate it because Arab Muslims have, at certain parts of history, believed that something else was the Qur'an, and that meets the challenge. Now, there have been stories of people who go to Arabia, they go to Pakistan, Afghanistan, somewhere, and they basically go to Muslim areas, and they just play an Arabic recitation that is done in the style of the Qur'an, but it's not actually the Qur'an, it's something different, and Muslims are no <laughs> are no wiser to what they're hearing. They think it's the Qur'an, they're like, oh yeah, that's this beautiful uh, Qur'an recitation there, but it's not. and. That, to me, again, also proves this. And they may say, yeah, but, you know, you need these scholars, you need these really, like, well-informed experts on the Qur'an. Those are the people who judge. Yeah, even that's happened. That's, that, this is the problem. If you go back in history, and I've covered this on my channel as well, in the first few hundred years of Islam, there were imams who were in their masjid, leading prayers, giving qira'a, given different Arabic Qur'an recitations that are not accepted today. According to today's standard, the ten qira'at, the ten different Arabic Qur'ans, they had a different one that wasn't in those 10. So they were wrong. They were reciting something to an audience that both the Iman and the audience thought was Quran in Arabic during prayers in a masjid, but it wasn't actually the Quran. So even Arabic experts who were close to Muhammad, even some of the Sahaba, <laughs> the companions of Muhammad recited the Quran that wasn't actually the Quran. And this is in their sources. Like this isn't controversial at all. So, on that account, this challenge has been met. It's interesting watching Da'is present this argument when they do it to a Western audience, because I don't think they realize how weak this argument is to a Westerner, someone who understands that when... Because this, this argument basically just appeals to emotion. It's kind of like, if you have this experience with the Quran, you can never meet this experience again, therefore it must be divine. But we know that experiences often come from other places that are not divine. Even demonic things can make you feel a certain way. That doesn't mean that it's God that is the source of such things. And generally speaking, people in the West have a very low opinion of this because it is, in effect, basically saying, the Quran is true because I have an experience of it that has never been matched by anything else, therefore it must be true. Of course, there have been Mormons who have made this argument, there have been Christians who have made this argument, there have been Jews who have made this argument. Really, it's a bad argument, though, because it is purely subjective based on that Muslim or that Da'i's experience. And a Christian, of course, can use this argument if they want to. They, they could say, hey, uh, I read the Psalms. I read Psalm 110. I read Psalm 23. I read, and I had this amazing experience that I don't think can ever be replicated in any other work. And I think that's proof that the Psalms are divinely inspired. You know, like it, you can easily make these kind of arguments. I just don't think they're good arguments to convince someone because Anyone can make them. An atheist could make them. An atheist could say, I read Richard Dawkins' The God Delusion, and I was so moved by it that it must have been from divine origin. Okay, that would be a funny argument. I don't think, <laughs> I don't think you'd make that one, but you get my point. The argument itself is just a bad argument. But that leads back to the whole question. If the Quran is from God, if it's from Allah, 
Why does it have bad arguments in it? Surely it only has the best arguments in it. Why does the Quran make polemical cases for its own authority as being a divine work and then employ some of the most bizarre arguments in favour of it? No one thinks these arguments are convincing other than Muslims who have already had this emotional experience with the Quran. So again, ladies and gentlemen, we're left with a conclusion here. Either the Quran is divinely inspired from Allah and Allah is a very confused, not very rational God that does not know how to best communicate with his creation, or the Quran is of human origins and only human origins. Thank God we don't have this issue with Christianity. But that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I'll follow up with the other arguments in a further video. God bless you all. If you're not a Christian, then today is the day. If you have any questions about the Christian faith, you can email me at chrisatspeakerscorner.gmail.com. The link's in the description down below. Other than that, God bless you all. Have a great day. Take care.